Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at in this video is the Unify Flex XG switch. Uh, this is the Unify Network Flex XG. I did buy this myself. Uh, and what this is, is this is the next gen. It's been out too for a little while. Um, it's not like it's like super duper brand new. But uh, it's the next step up on the Flex. It does have uh, PoE uh, in. Now, it's a 1 gig PoE in port. And then you've got four 10 gig PoE ports. On the bottom there is, or on the back, there's a USB-C. Um, and this thing is hefty. It's, it's like the Switch 8 Enterprises where it's like, it's like one big heat sink. I mean, this thing probably weighs at least five pounds if I had to guess. We'll take a look. Uh, but it is a US Flex XG input, five volts uh, equals five amps. So four ports, it's got the rubber, it's got a rubber feet on the bottom, big rubber foot here. It's got uh, some mounting stuff here. I'll show you what's in the box real quick. So in the box, you get some mounting screws. You get what, at first glance, when you look at this, would be a ginormous PoE injector. However, that is not the case. It it is. It's kind of kind of matches the. Uh, we got to have a conversation too with all these vendors about sustainability because I don't know that I necessarily need plastic wrap and it's not just ubiquity so don't think i'm picking on them it's every vendor so yeah so you got this the, this power brick that's got USB C on the end mickey mouse uh plug in there you've got a uh, quick start guide and then the other thing that every vendor should include is you get a mounting template that has a level and then you get the actual mounting mounting plate. So let's hop over real quick and take a look at the uh, the specs. So it's a compact five port layer two, so it doesn't do the layer three. 10 gig speeds. And um, if your uplink is that one gig port, obviously, you know, you're not, you're not going to get 10 gig out, but you could power this and then do 10 gig between the devices that are plugged into this switch uh let's see so it weighs 2.6 pounds man it feels heavier than that um 5.3 by 7.3 by 1.3 inches it is polycarbonate you got one uh, poe plus port and four 10 gig ports total non-blocking throughput of 41 gigs with a switching capacity of 82 gigs and an actual forwarding rate of 61 million packets per second. As you can see, we can either do the PoE plus in right here for the power, or we can do the USB type C. So that's that five volt DC five amp. And let's see, max power consumption is 25 uh, watts. Uh, it's got a, the factory reset button. And I think that's about it. You gotta be on Unify Network 6.1.67 or later, which is an older version. So let's go ahead and get this uh, plugged in and we will get it adopted over to my controller. Okay, as we can see, the um, US Flex XG is ready for adoption, popped right up. Now, I want to point this out before somebody else does and gets all crazy about it, but I am running EA software, but your experience of looking at this device should be just about the same. I am running EA. If you're in EA, you have access to this exact software that I'm running, but I'm not going to talk about it uh, until Ubiquity talks about it. After they talk about it, then it seems to be okay for us. But uh, this is EA Unify. But um, here is the Flex XG. We're going to go ahead and adopt this. And so it is adopting. And as soon as it's adopted in, we will be right back. All right, as you can see, the Flex XG is updating. And as soon as the adoption is done, we will uh, we'll take a look. 
All right, so welcome back. It's been a few minutes. I had to get a cup of coffee. I had to change some Ethernet cables around on another switch. That little uh, Flex right there, not the Flex XG, the other Flex. It looks like we're running the same firmware now across the board. So let's take a look at the Flex XG. So here is our, you know what, hold on a second. Okay, hopefully this is better. Okay, so here is our overview. We've got a nice little picture of the switch. Uh, we've got our five ports here. You can see that I'm uplinked, um, and I'm uplinked to the UDR. And then I have a single uplink that runs to an Alta Labs 8-port switch that's here on the desk for testing. Now, uh, you, you can see here it says 2.5 gig, 5 gig, and 10 gig. So what I didn't see in the notes is if that if this switch actually supports that or what i don't know is if is this just part of the the ui completely i don't know i i uh that's a great question <laughs> so um and then you can see it's got an icon for aggregate which we are now let me see if i can zoom in oh yeah look at that aggregate we can do mirroring uh if it is spanning tree blocks so you can see We've got some basic information here, MAC address, device version, uptime, memory usage, parent device is my UDR uh, port 2, and I do have gigabit to that. Uh, I can open up the port manager, and this is kind of what you are uh, used to. Let me zoom this out a little bit. So you can see my desktop. It sees my desktop. It doesn't recognize, obviously, the uh, Alta switch. Um, as a unified device, but I can come in here and I can edit a port just like we've been able to. And now, um, everything should pretty much be the same. Let's go back to the hardware here. And let's move that over. All right. So that all looks the same, all fine and dandy there. Let's take a look at the insights. Uh, it tells me that it has been uh, updated. No uh, logs for clients, and obviously it's only been online a few minutes. Under settings, we can change the name. We can do uh, network override right now. I've just got it set for DHCP. And everything is following the global switch settings. I could uncheck that and then manually do the jumbo frames, flow control, spanning tree, set my spanning tree priority. We could turn on 802.1x. Now here we can turn the uh, LED off. Um, one really nice thing um, about Unify is if I have a switch and um, this one goes bad. If I've got one that's compatible, if it's still in the controller and not forgotten, I can copy the configuration to this new device. So that makes that really easy. We've got our debug terminal. We can do a manual firmware update. We can locate the device, which will blink that LED. We can restart it or remove it. So this is a new mainstay here in my network for some 10 gig stuff uh, that you're going to be seeing interoperability with uh, Grandstream layer three switches and things like that. So um, if you've got any questions about this switch, let me know down in the comments. And if I can find an Amazon affiliate link, I'll leave that for this as well. If you've got any questions, if you're using this switch, let me know how it's working out for you. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links and a Patreon link. And as always, if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out the contact information there on the front page. Submit that and someone will be with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.